Okay, starting the stream now. Let's see how the internets are doing. Might be kind of a choppy stream to start off with. Let's see, it looks like it's fixing up a little bit. Okay, good. Good, looks like we're looking good. Sometimes it takes a second to sort of get going. Got the chat window open, and I'm also going to start a stream on Instagram as well. I got my phone here streaming, so I got four cameras pointing at me. Uh, hi guys, uh, this is Christopher Clark again, uh, streaming for a band gallery today. Uh, I'm finishing, well, working, continuing this surrealism fantasy <coughs> piece I started earlier. Thank you guys for having tuned in earlier. And if this is your first time tuning in, thank you for watching. Um, I'm Christopher Clark, if you didn't know that. I'm still sort of new to the fine art scene, I guess. I was a Ben's, um, I was their, uh, their solo artist in January, which was fun. Um, and uh, I'm doing another solo show with them next month, uh, an online show of smaller pieces. This piece is available for purchase for them, but it won't be in the, the show. So, Hi guys, thanks everyone for joining. I'm Christopher Clark, doing some fun painting here. I'm watching as people are joining on all the, the, the streams. <laughs> okay, so I'm finishing this piece up, or working on it some more. Um, this piece is available through a band gallery anyone uh, is interested in buying the original and it's hard when I'm streaming on my phone um, uh, thanks uh, Russell uh, Russ Klein oh awesome thanks man um, uh, yeah if you guys want to follow my work it's Christopher Clark art is my Facebook and Instagram and uh, yeah this this piece is available on a Ben's website or you know, whatever platform you're watching on just message Dave and uh, he can get you taken care of um, we also we are selling prints um, on Christopher Clark art.com all right now I can start with these birds Fun little birds in a million different sort of angles. This will sort of, they'll just sort of disintegrate from the dress. So, uh, hi guys, watching on Facebook. Uh, let's see here. It's hard to not repeat too many bird sort of shapes. You know. Where did I just do that? I don't want to be too repetitive. Like I got to keep thinking of different bird shapes to paint. And they have to kind of overlap. Let's squash that away. Um, thanks guys for watching earlier today if you tuned in. Um, if you like my work, uh, you can follow whatever streaming service you're watching this on or social media um, I do also work for uh, Lucasfilm and Marvel um, I paint a lot of stuff for them I was in Orlando in what February doing a show at Epcot Center with them um, at the International Festival of the Arts. So that was fun. I do a lot of Comic Cons and such. All right, some of this needs to get a little darker when it's down here. Just sort of poking these birds in there.
And I've got uh, my next sort of painting schedule lined up. I've got four Lord of the Rings paintings that I'm in the middle of concepting right now. Let's do, these have to overlap. And I want this painterly quality to it. I don't want to get too specific with anything here. What's this one's going to be sort of gliding. So I got to like invent all these birds. Tough problem, right? This needs to be dark enough. And here they start to get like I want it to sort of turn into the dress where you can't distinguish where they're coming from and ending. It's like a massive birds exploding out. I kind of did this Batman piece. I, mean, I, I did this Batman piece a couple years ago, maybe a year ago or so, um, where I did a similar, where Batman's cape disintegrates into all these bats, and it was pretty cool. Um, I've also done an Alice in Wonderland piece where she has a dress that disintegrates into all these butterflies. Cool concept, I don't know. You know, just fun. Let's say there's one here. I gotta make sure I keep it. I don't wanna point any of them too far off the... This brush is a little splayed. It's a little old, but it actually kind of works really well for this application. Kind of makes the birds a little fuzzier, at least here anyway. Yeah, the hard part is they need to overlap properly. So there's a bunch of them. This one could be going down. And this will be more apparent as they get away from the dress, I think. Um, oh, hi guys. Nikki Schneider, how's it going? Thanks for watching. <laughs> Good to see you again. Um, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Which scenes? Uh, this isn't a scene from any movie or anything. This is just my own thing. Oh, what scenes for Lord of the Rings? Um, oh, and this is Christopher Clark. Um, I'm a Bend artist as well as uh, Lucasfilm and Marvel, but uh, this particular piece is with uh, a Bend gallery available through them and. Um, you can find me on their website, Christopher Clark, uh, and my own social media is Christopher Clark Art. So you can find me on Facebook and Instagram, Christopher Clark Art. I guess I should like put a link on the top of <laughs> the, the comments here so you guys know. Um, and I could pin that one. Maybe I should do that. It's kind of hard because I'm streaming on multiple things. I will comment. Christopher Clark Art. And I will go at, and I can pin this comment. There we go. Yay, look at that. Uh, oh, so which scenes from, from uh, Lord of the Rings? Um, well, hang on, let me, I, it's, it's hard to, let me recall that while I'm doing this here. Um, I need a bird right there. Let's see, this one's flying this way. Um, I'm doing um, the uh, you know the moment where S Sam carries Frodo and says, "I can't carry it, but I can carry you." Um, I'm doing. Um, uh, a, a view of Minas Tirith when it is being sieged by 
the, the orcs and stuff, and then you see in the distance on the horizon, it's like dawn, and you can see the Gondor reinforcements showing up. Um, so that'll be a great sort of scenery, landscapey kind of kind of piece. Um, I've done the concepts for those two so far. I feel like those are the most straightforward somehow. And I'm doing also um, let's see I'm doing the the fellowship leaving Lothlorien, the, the woods of Lorien. So we'll see some light coming through the trees and stuff and they'll be in their boats. You know, that'll be a fun one. Uh, so, the, is that it? Oh, and then something from Aragorn's coronation. I don't know yet, because it's a, it's a lot that happens in that scene. So I don't know what we want to do yet. That's something I might need to talk to the customer about. Uh, hi there, Grace. Watching in San Diego. Thanks for watching, guys. It's so hard to like find a new bird design that's like not, you know, I can't be too repetitive. Let's say this one's going to be, let's do a sort of, I got a reference of a bunch of different birds sort of flying. And now I'm painting over some of my sky. And I want these to be real brushy, like just a couple brush strokes, you know. Just like that. There we go. Yeah, it's reading good. Oh, nice. You always enjoy your daredevil. <laughs> yeah, that was a fun one. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for following along. Um, we still have uh, prints of all my pop culture stuff. Um, and... and Prints of most of my fine art pieces also at ChristopherClarkArt.com. Let's do this, guys, like this. Flapping his little wings. Uh, we are also starting a Patreon. Um, so if you'd like to follow us and subscribe on our Patreon and just support the gallery and myself and our artwork, uh, it's um, patreon.com slash amazing art expo that's something I definitely need to have a more of a link for uh, I need to post a link for that let's say here's a bird here's his little tail to sort of splay out the feathers at the, at the end there. Yeah, these are like in motion, like flapping birds. I might come back with a fan brush and sort of push them around a little bit. Here's this one like this. Maybe it's a little bigger. These are birds just flying everywhere. They're going to sort of go up to about here. See, now they're spaced evenly. i got to start overlapping them and not space them very evenly. Let's say right there. Just make a decision. I also need to make sure these look like birds and not bats, because <laughs> they're kind of dark. 
So their shape of their wings and stuff will indicate which one of those they are. And I can take it, I've got a clean brush here if I want to sort of touch up, push the paint back the other way. Do another one right there. He's really winding up to take a big stroke. We'll do that guy there too. amusing. I'm uh, currently reading Harry Potter in French, and the French word for bat, I was surprised to find out, is chauve-souris, which means uh, like a bald mouse, um, for some reason. <laughs> bald mouse. So whenever they sit down for Halloween at their dinner, il y a cent ans de bolcherie vive en volant près du plafond. There's like, hundreds of Bald mice flying around by the ceiling. <laughs> wow, okay. Okay, let's keep it going here. I like get this sort of greenish little touch of medium. <laughs> but then they get lighter as they get further away so let's say there's one right here he's pushing down so they curve up a little bit yeah I'm liking the sort of splayed crappy quality of this brush it's like it's like older and like, you know, the br bristles aren't exactly lined up super well anymore, but uh, it's working well for this sort of application. It adds a lot of motion and stuff. There's another one right there. to be definitely deliberate brush strokes, not random. There we go. Let's get another. I'll use my smaller brush and I can make make them a little more pink purple or something a little less saturated though yeah here come the rooster yeah listen to some Alice in Chains we ain't gonna die No, 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 we ain't gonna die. Hope you don't mind me singing, because that's what I do when I paint. Place them and fill them in later. I 
What's up, Patrick? <coughs> Comment vas-tu? <coughs> Je suis ici. Tous les jours, peintre. L'histoire de ma vie. <coughs> So that's a big swoop guy right here. Swoop. Bien frère. start making these C'est très difficile pour inventer beaucoup de poissons qui volent uh, voler vers la distance. J'ai um, quelques photos pour référence, mais uh, je dois vraiment inventer uh, les positions différentes. Comment le faire que euh, il semblait très loin d'ici, plus près à les nuages. Ah, I'm running out of ideas for birds. <laughs> without copying and like without repeating. I don't want to just like slop in a crappy looking bird like that one. We'll do that one behind there. That guy's too dark. Uh, hi there, Kathy. Thank you. Love the dress. Who wouldn't want a dress like this, right? It turns into a bunch of birds. <laughs> Let's say this one's maybe a touch closer to this darker green color, and it's like here. My paintbrushes become drumsticks when I'm painting. Uh, hi there. Thanks for watching. This is amazing. Thank you. I'm Christopher Clark. I'm working on this piece for a band gallery. Um, and if you want to follow me, it's Christopher Clark Art is my Facebook and Instagram. This painting is available for sale through a band gallery. Just uh, hit up Dave. Um, whatever service you're on, 
if it's one of a Ben's, just message them and they'll 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 get back to you and set you up with this one. He's probably watching right now, so he's very aware. He's on it. Um, yeah, please follow us on whatever streaming service you're watching, because I plan to do this a lot. I have been doing this a lot, for sure. Faux show. What is that? That's not a bird. Jeez. <laughs> that one's terrible. Let's fix that guy. There we go. They're supposed to be sort of flying away, you know. Maybe this guy's a super mega arc, that guy there. As they get further away, it's just like more and more in the smaller space that I have to invent. Like here I could do four or five and it's this huge area. Now it's like here, it's like 10. I'm trying to avoid just turning them into V's and M's, you know. <laughs> Where do they go to? They sort of end up here, maybe. And that distant. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, hi Alice, thank you very much. Combat artist, how's it going? Thanks for watching. Got an intense name, man. Or woman, I can't tell. Um, you know, man is in like dude, person. Mm -hmm. I kind of say that to everybody. fill in some pieces of the dress here too when I get to this spot. start overlapping that's the tough part how do you make them overlap just it's hard to not get too predictable with your birds into repetitive that's the word mm -hmm. there we go just sort of fling in a, a shape and hope it works birds are great things to add to like a cityscape painting too they really add a lot of motion shape. I don't want to continue that too far out. Maybe we'll put one more. I want some space, but here not as much. There's a bird right there. Now I can add some darker ones. That's a little too blue-purple. Yeah, I want this to be just like an indiscriminate mass of birds as they're like breaking free. 
This painting is called One Final Melody. I'll let you invent your own story with that. The reverse bird piper. Oh, uh, hi, Mandy. How's it going? <laughs> I haven't seen you in a while. Uh, Army 1968. Right on. Uh, my dad was in the Marines. Probably about that same time. How's Lucia doing, Mandy? I uh, I met a, an Italian lady uh, recently, and her name was Lucia. I'm like, I didn't want to tell her that my friend's dog is also named Lucia. <laughs> that wouldn't be necessarily the most uh, you know nicest thing you could say to someone. Well, that's the same name as my friend's dog. So I refrained. <laughs> but uh, I miss Lucia. She's a great dog. See this brushwork. Brushwork turns into these birds. It's fun. Now I can maybe add sort of the reverse negative space here. Just, you know, color for no reason. Well, there's always a reason for color, but it doesn't have to be necessarily explained here. Kind of like when fantasy doesn't need to be explained. Like, I'm a big Star Trek fan, grew up watching Star Trek, but, it, you know, one thing that's that, that's got to be tough for them is they have to explain everything. It's science fiction. Um, a different style of science fiction that's more fantasy is like Star Wars. But they don't care about explaining anything. It's just the story and the environment they live in, you just accept it and it's fine. So different quality. So that's kind of what this is. It's, I think that's more fantasy. Magical things happen, or they seem like magic to us, and we don't need to explain them because it doesn't matter. It's the story that matters. Um. <laughs> A lot of hiking. <laughs> she misses everyone, not enough ball time, right? That dog and the ball. I bet she dreams about ball at night. Ball. Hey guys, you know it'd be fun if we played ball? I have a fun idea. What if we played ball? I'm sure everyone's has or has known a dog like that. Ball. Hi, Lucia. Ball. Hi there. You wanna wanna play ball? That'd be fun, right? Ooh, what if we do a couple lighter colored ones here, even? That could break it up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. This was not in my original concept, but it just occurred to me and I'm going to do it. Kind of helps the dress break up a little more too. You can make it more crowded with birds without being a blob of, of dark color.
uh, Vietnam. I, my dad was also in Vietnam. And I've heard some stories about that place, let me tell you. He didn't talk about it much, but when he did, it was pretty nuts. <coughs> so, thank you for serving there. And uh, I guess sort of sorry that you got sent there, because I'm sure that was a rough time. But, you know, thanks for your service still. <laughs> Let's fill in a little more of this here. Ooh, got to plug in my computer. Sometimes I forget and it just kills the, the video feed. Here we go. Let's do one guy right there. Um, cool. Let's bring this dark a little more here as part of this. here make some of these sort of things come in like what is that roughly kind of dress called um, there's all kinds of ruffles and stuff I don't know much about fashion and fabric, whatever. But lots of little tiny folds and ruffles and things. And I want this to sort of transition to that. Oops, got a little bit of paint on her hand. that back a little bit. <coughs> um, let's get a little bit more of this lighter. You know, I'm just sort of poking at it. It's actually getting close to where I want it. I need to do these forward clouds a little more. They're just sort of piles of paint right now. Yeah, let's work on these a little bit. Take a take a change here. Okay, looks like Instagram's probably got about a half hour left. Instagram only lets me stream for an hour. Get my bigger brushes here. How many have I used? Uh, white, this darker one, green one. This is going to be sort of this more orangey pink color, but a little, a little darker, got a little more orange, add a little more green to that. I want that to be a little more transparent. Playing the drums in my head with my music. Let's 
That's where these are sort of pinkish. Orange-ish to start with here. I think I want them to go back up to a sort of a yellow, lighter, but a little more green. So these colors are a little closer, so I gotta give them a little more attention. I'm just inventing these. Let's say these are going to be, there could be a little bit of rim light on them. Yeah, I think this painting is definitely more along that slightly more illustrated quality instead of a photorealistic approach. It is a little more freeing what I can do with brushwork when it's like that. And I'm just trying a different approach. Done plenty of sort of photorealistic surrealism pieces. Trying my hand at a little different style. This was also sort of spurned by my um, sort of taking up exploring the anime style. It's been a new genre that I've recently done quite a few paintings of. Which is really fun. All right, these definitely get more. This is my orange brush. Let's keep that. Um, I can use. Let's make sort of this. It's almost the same color as this dark greenish, but it's a little more. It's got a touch of red in it. Mm -hmm. some medium in there. Keeping this real transparent. We'll say we'll make that a little more pink and a little lighter. Let's make those a little lighter. that it's a little greenish a little purplish a little more purple Seeing him in person is a true pleasurable experience. I'm like, seeing who in person? Are you, are you talking about me? <laughs> I guess. Um, thank you. I'm like, did I talk about some kind of person that I saw recently? <laughs> me, I guess you're talking about. Well, thank you very much. I hope that's what you meant. Yeah, this is real thin, and that's intentional. Because I'm keeping... I love all this stuff going on here that I made.
we're doing clouds. Couple highlights, but not a lot. In general, these are darker. Whoop, totally wrong brush that I grabbed. It's okay, put a little bit of put a little bit of fun orange in there for some reason. Now what I can do is I can hit up a little bit of light through here. That's always fun to do. You think the shadow's dark and it gets light again just before the next sort of row. And there's like some heavy pinks showing up through here. I see you get some light passing through those. That's great. been fun really like studying clouds and learning how to learning how to invent them is one big thing um, been flying a lot for shows and uh, I'll, I love the window seat because I can sketch and nobody hits my arm you know uh, or I can snooze against the window or whatever but I love looking at the clouds I've got videos and pictures when, when the plane passes through some clouds I take video or photos and I study them so I can like, what is a cloud made of? How do you, how do you, what's the anatomy of a cloud, you know? Sort of, sort of, you know, it's a great way to study them being up there right next to them, you know, it's fabulous. Um, that's a little dark. So I can glance in the feed for the video here and see, kind of get a, a look at what it looks like. Um, did I complete several sketches before attempting this work? Um, I did. Uh, I did a photo shoot first with a model, um, my girlfriend, who is uh, also an artist, but she's also a, we model for each other quite a bit. <laughs> um, and then, because I had an idea and I, I already knew what kind of pose I wanted, uh, and then I did. A digital sketch from that I did a charcoal and acrylic sketch from that and now I'm doing this so it's been a combination of several um, sort of iterations and I can sort of blend this if I would, could you This sort of green coming through here. Okay, there's that side of those. Yeah, I don't know if she's sort of blending in with the clouds or what. Could, that could work too. I wasn't really sure what to do there, but I kind of like it. She sort of blends in there. Okay, yeah, it's kind of fun inventing this kind of stuff instead of just sticking to a photo reference, you know? It's, it's a little more freeing. Um, incidentally, I believe um, Dave sh from a band should have the sketch that I did for this piece available as well. Um, so that's that's floating out there. Negotiate clouds and all these birds everywhere. Friggin' birds everywhere. Oh, Alfred Hitchcock for you. It's like a reverse Alfred Hitchcock. I can sort of invent the shape that I want these to take. without diluting too much of my sweet underpainting that I made. Sweet. So sweet. 
Oh. This is way too dark now. This is going to be sort of, I can do a little pink here. Maybe a little more. A little touch of medium. And incidentally, anyone watching on Instagram, you're actually watching it in reverse uh, because it's the back mirror, the, the, the front camera on my phone. So um, she's flying the other direction, so don't let that jar you too much if you look at it online and go, hey, wait a minute. That's not right. And I am left-handed. Um, so, fun fact. Okay, and then I can do a little more green here. Um, let's go like this, a little more edge. Some of these clouds here. Soften some and harden some. Just sort of play around with it. So Bob Ross always said, clouds are about the freest thing in nature. They just sort of dance and play and have a good time. He is right. He's right about a lot of things. Clouds are one of them. Seems no one around. How's that looking? Cool. That's a weird old dimple there. Let's fix that. Yeah, I love this texture. Um, let's smooth that out a little bit with a little more blue, purple, something. I want to introduce a new color that's not anywhere else in the painting. And I gotta find a place to put it. Just to smooth those out a little bit. Yeah, and I got some super mega dark clouds coming at us. Sort of extreme foreground sort of stuff. Let's do that a little more actually. Get some purple, but boy that purple's sensitive, you gotta be careful. some colors on my palette that you look at them wrong and they'll just like invade your whole painting. Um, this Egyptian violet is definitely one of them. Yeah, here the clouds almost become birds too. It's kind of fun. Cool, so rough, rough, really gentle, rendered, you know, kind of a nice mixture of the two, I think. Um, all right, let's stand back and look at this. This is getting close to being done. I wasn't sure if I was going to get that far tonight. So we're making dinner in a few minutes. Um, if you were watching earlier, I know I left because my this uh, landscaping guy was supposed to come. Never came. <laughs> trying to get an estimate for xeriscaping our, our yard, you know, less, less like pure lawn and more like, um, you know, water needy plants and stuff, not cactus and rock, you know, more creative than that. Um, but the guy never showed up twice in a row. We scheduled him yesterday too. Also didn't show up Matt, you know, we were talking, messaging and said, Sorry, we got stuck on a job. We'll come out tomorrow. Well, that was today. Still didn't come out. So I'm like, well, there you go. Do you want my money or not? Apparently not. <laughs> um, okay. So 
after not having dealt with a landscape guy, I'm like, well, I can come back and paint a bit until dinner. Let's, uh, I can see a couple of birds already that I don't like. I don't like you. Let's clean you up. Need way more lighter value on that. What do I want to do with that? Let's figure that out now. To that. better. To just touch up some of their their contour a little bit. I was deciding how much detail to put in these guys. I don't want a lot. I kind of like that they're it's silhouetted. I think this is easily the kind of thing where it get real stiff if I just painted each bird for an hour and a half, you know, and made every feather, you know, it'd be too much detail. Um, I also wanted to, I need to this finger over a little bit. I noticed that earlier. Um, do I have a dark flesh tone tiny brush? Yeah. I think I do need to separate those guys just a little bit. And then where do I have a dark green? Not entirely, but I can make one. I have a fistful of brushes usually. a little longer that one especially and let's maybe soften that this shadow a little bit radically poetic mm -hmm. Don't mind me, I'm rocking out here. I think I got some 90s stuff going on today. This Rage Against the Machine playing right now. <laughs> that bitch got a violin. That's right. <laughs> Bitches love violins. Alright, I don't know if I love something about her eye. stick let's say a little darker I might have to sleep on this one to see what I like and don't like about her face Definitely gonna have. Okay. Oh, Instagram's about to go away because it's reached its hour. So uh, I'm Christopher Clark. Thank you guys for watching. 
Um, follow me online and hit up Dave if you're interested in this painting. Um, you can follow me at Christopher Clark Art um, on Instagram or Facebook. And uh, hit up Dave at A Bend Gallery for this piece. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Instagram gives me a little timer countdown. Okay, share to story. There we go. Okay. I'm going to paint for another 12 minutes, maybe, because at 8 o'clock we were going to go make dinner. <laughs> it's almost 8 o'clock here, so. I don't want to do any strings on that violin, because you might not really see them. I might uh, poke at it after it's dry. What was I in the middle of doing and I totally got interrupted by noticing Instagram was <laughs> oh, I was playing with her face. Yeah, this I might need to just sort of sleep on and see what I like and don't like about it. Did I just lose a bristle? Yeah, I just did. Right there, right on her middle of her face. Ah. <laughs> Darn it. Right on her eye. It's like stuck on there. What are you doing? There we go. That's in her hair now. That's way more invisible. can go up a little higher. There's a plane inside of that eye there. It's not really defined right now. There's always a dark inside the eye there. Outside here, there's usually one too. I can lower this eyelash a touch as well to sort of poke everything into place. Sometimes you just sort of poke it around. extend just a tiny bit maybe that's a little too much need to make that a lot lighter oh, this is such a tiny little delicate face Oh, nice. <laughs> um, yeah, my uh, my playlist today, because uh, we did a, a funny little lip sync video last night of uh, of an Alice in Chains song uh, for a friend's birthday. Like, oh, post a fun lip sync video. Um, so we did uh, we did Man in the Box by Alice in Chains, and it turned into this total rock star sort of session. It was really fun. Uh, I'll post a video online later uh, it might get muted because it's 
got music that we don't own, but we'll try. I'm going to try to do some sort of wispies with the hair. Little wispies. Um, I can do some a little more lighter and orange. Without making her look like a wreck, you know. <laughs> I don't want her to look like her hair is like a total wreck. I just want it to be like wispy and blowy. Let's say a little more wild and blowy. Yeah, just a couple little wisps. Um, say hi to Amber. Miss you both. Um, <coughs> yeah, thanks, Mandy. Good to see you. Or sort of, you know, hear from you. Uh, I will tell her you said hi. She's upstairs probably working on dinner, which I will be joining her in a few minutes. <laughs> um, I got a few more minutes. I can do some fun painty stuff here. Um, get that little edge at the bottom. A little more purple. There we go. Just a little chunk that didn't get any paint on it that I wanted. Okay, here's this. Here's my friend here, so that I don't breathe in some splattery paint action. Okay, now I'm ready. Let's do some fun greenish yellow. That's way too green. Shoot. I lost it. I had it and then I lost it. stuff around here. This is a great way to add some subtle edges and texture without disturbing the paint that I've already put down. And a little random quality too. Some stuff I can't. A little motion, a little unpredictable, a little glowy glow, you know. Let's do some of this sort of green. Fill this in a little bit too, just for fun, for funsies. Make a little more green. Maybe a little phthalo blue, just to change it up a little bit. This has a lot of yellow in it still. Oh. Yeah, a medium. I 
can't use mineral spirits right now because it'll eat through the paint. So a good color for this section here. Let's put some of that around here even. Let's, let's, now that I look at it, I can soften some of that up a little bit. A couple of the big giant spots that I don't necessarily want. Just add some fun texture. Let's say lighter here. Let's take some of that off the bird just a little bit. That'll help that sort of dissolve a little bit, I think, too. Cool, this is a darker kind of green. I can do that in here. So that I can smear around. Definitely gives a nice organic quality. It's not just paint brush stroke, you know. You know how it is. Um, let's take this and sort of add some purple. So it'll be the right quality purple. Some white. A little more red. A ton of medium. Oh, that's my alarm for... Uh, I've, I've still been going outside and howling at night at 8 o'clock. Uh, I'm kind of the only one on the block that does it anymore. Of course, I'm down here painting right now. Maybe I'll go outside and do a cool one later. Let's do... I'll do a little bit of orange. A little bit of yellow. Touch around her face, just blowing that out a little bit. Gonna add some light diffraction happening here. I can make it real harsh or real subtle, whatever I want. Depends on how much paint is on here and how hard I lick the brush. <laughs> well, I have to remodel that finger. Let's go for some orange. Yellow. Let's bring some around here a little bit. Do a little more. A little more harsh with it. I need to have them everywhere. Can do a little orange. Get a little more mileage out of it. This is real subtle stuff, but adds, you know, subtleties. Really, what you learn about painting over the years.
Okay. That might be it for now. I might sleep on this and look at it later. So, thank you guys for watching. Okay. Uh, please follow me online, uh, Christopher Clark Art, on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, please follow whatever video channel you happen to be watching. Um, and uh, if you'd like to, to subscribe to our Patreon so you can support uh, the gallery and myself as an artist, uh, please go to uh, patreon.com slash amazingartexpo. And uh, this painting is available through Abend Gallery. You can uh, email Dave at abendgallery David at abendgallery.com or just message him on whatever service if you're watching on one of Abend's streaming services. Or message us anywhere. We'll you know we'll get you in touch with them. So um, anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Can't wait to see Lord of the Rings ideas. Yeah, I'm working on them, so they'll be up soon. <laughs> thanks, guys. Talk to you soon.